you are listening to Fanfare Tracks. Rolling. Roll. Roll. Don't use any of this. Oh. Don't Okay, do carry three. Five. They love you. You know. This is Princess Leia Organa. You're listening to Planet Leia. Permission is granted to land on Planet Leia. Brought to you by Fanthatrax. Here are your hosts, Claire Henry and Johanna Nibielius. Welcome to another episode of Planet Leia. We thought that we would take a look back into the archives of some of the interviews that I've carried out over the years for Fanthatrax. And I've discovered a couple that have yet to be heard. Let me introduce our first interview, who is with Marilyn Turk, an actress who I met at Star Wars Fan Fun Day before the pandemic. Let's hear her talking about her roles in the original trilogy. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Hi, it's Claire here, and I'm here with Marilyn. And um, Marilyn, can you tell everybody who you played and in what films? So in the uh, Empire Strikes Back, I played a host rebel. Uh, That was my first film. I didn't do the very first, but we were one, two, and three, the first ones, which are now... Four, five, and six. That's right. So yeah. And then in Return of the Jedi, I was in Jabba's palace in the Return of the Jedi, and I was in this scene playing a character called Bido, who was a Rodean bounty hunter and cousin of... Greedo, who Uh, got shot in the first one. Oh, yes, yes. The demise of Greedo. The demise, yes. So I am a cousin. So when you filmed uh, Empire, and obviously everything had happened around the, you know, this this independent sci-fi film had then just gone... And well, it like took a while because we were told there were going to be ten films, but there was a hiatus in between those two before they did any more. So we were off doing other things then. We didn't knew nothing about it till years later when someone said we're going to make some more. And then, so you knew then that there was going to be. We were told there would be, but it didn't start straight away. Yeah. So we didn't get a call to do anything for years later. So were you filming out in Fence then? Did you have to go out or did you do the sets? No, we did it all in Elstree. Brilliant. All in Elstree, which there was no M25, so we had to drive right through the straight straight through London to get to Elstree Studio. And we filmed three weeks during a six-week period. And that's how long it took, because it was nearly two hours, sometimes even longer, because we'd, we'd finish, say, on a Friday afternoon, and there would be rush hour to get through London, which was hopeless hours so travelling. <laughs> when you when you were filming there, so was it George Lucas yes, himself yes, was yeah. actually direct? Yes. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. part of the... Oh, yeah, he was there, and Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher were all on set with us. So have you ever looked back and watched Empire and gone and looked for yourself? or do No, you, no, no, I don't. My husband only watched them quite recently, well, in the last 10 years. He'd never seen them. And I'd only ever seen the first one, which I took my son when he was nine, never knowing that I would actually be in one and then it's, with a green head on. <laughs> you know, that was, that was a kickback, not even as myself Yeah. when I got to that one. So yeah. have you met up with... Do yeah. you meet up with the actors from I, from I Jabba's know. Palace then and the Bounty Hunters? Yeah, on various um, Comic Cons and yeah. stuff like that we meet up. And I had a nucleus of friends who were all in our scene and we had a dressing room, green room together. And, you know, the actors would come in and chat to us because while we were hanging around waiting for our scenes, we had to be on standby. So we were there for days. <laughs> and nowadays they've changed the... Oh, I you don't know, know anything. The, the, it's the, all too the new. effects and everything. But yeah. in those days, it was groundbreaking and pioneering, oh, wasn't it? And oh, the special effects guys in this country are fantastic. Yeah. They and, are and they do. Big. So when you had to put on your. That head. That yeah. head. In the heat. Yes. With all those other characters. Three people in Jabba the Hutt. And, and, trying, and trying to coordinate. Yeah. I mean, could you see out of the. 
Well, when I first went for the audition, you had to be a size 10 to get in these costumes because oh, they were supposed word. to be men and they had to put women in because they were so small that I got claustrophobia and I pushed the eyes out and the wardrobe came along looking at us all, pushed my eye, I remember pushing, she pushed my eyes back in. I thought, I was, I was okay until they put the things on my hands and then I panicked because I thought, I can't get the head off. Because but you uh, overcome that. It's yeah. amazing how you do. But I know a friend of mine went for the audition and she said, I can't do this. Just because of the enclosed feeling that yeah. you got from the costume. And she was only doing the, you know, the audition. <laughs> it just so, gave her a head. One of and heads. so it was hours and hours and hours of... And yet, you know, we only had to put the head on. We didn't have to go through prosthetics or anything, yeah. as they do now. And there are hours in hair and makeup. And we just sort of put a head on. Stick up. That's, that's a bonus. <laughs> it was wonderful. This woman came up to me just now and said, it's not fair. I said, what's not fair? She said that you don't get to be seen, just the thing. I said, oh, we were happy. Yeah, we I, I like it. Have you got a, a, a figure? Is there yes. a figure of you? Well, someone's actually had one made, and there was actually a Lego figure. They did a limited edition because I went to... My cousin runs a charity steam train in her garden, just an... Double O oh, wow. Gage or something, and she owns it for charity. And I met a, a, a cousin, and the little girl found she, she got home and she found it in her toy box when she knew that I was in it. And she sent me a picture of her holding up a Beedo, not Greedo, it was Beedo, my character, who was a cousin supposedly of Greedo. Yes, yeah. So she had this, but then another friend, a real close friend of mine, said, "Oh, I want one of those." Anyway, apparently it was a limited edition, and they're no oh, well, doing they'll it. They'll be like hands teeth. You'll never be able to get hold of any you of them. She had one. I couldn't believe it. So that they were. Yeah, it's mind blowing, really. How it, big it is. Yes, that's the thing about it, isn't it? I've been blown away by this. This I've never been to any event as well. Um, you know, promoted money donated to charity yeah. and all these ardent fans they're fantastic they go all over the world and they've all met up and they're all friends i couldn't believe sitting at this table last night all these people came from all different parts of the country and countries yes and yet they'd all become really firm friends and they'd met up in say chicago or anywhere yeah. and because we'd all Sweden. just come back from Chicago to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, like that was only two weeks ago. And it was lovely because we were all like, it was so busy, you just didn't get a chance to speak to anybody. Yeah. So last night's dinner was great. Yeah. We got up. Except when the music starts and you couldn't even hear yourself. Oh, no, I know. Thing. I have to say, though, that was my childhood, that music. I was like, I oh, know. Person. Not my child, it was about my adult, my young adult. And I was like, oh, lovely. I my wanted to own that dance. Is. Oh. oh. Oh, I, I thought it. that was brilliant. I was. I wanted to own that dance floor that Julie Dolan and the oh, voice yeah. actress. You, you, you could see her and I were sort of like we, we were like wiggling. I, I was all on my own at this table. Everyone had left to go and do the auctions, and I was just going like this from side to side. Right, next time the three of us are on the dance floor. Then, right? Is that thank you. That's it's a promise. A date, yeah, yeah it's we're quite that. Listen, thank you so much for taking time to speak to me today it's you're welcome it's been a lovely day yeah, it's been it's been super it's been well for us it's been weekend yeah super. nice way to end the bank holiday yeah great well, we had nothing else planned so it's lucky that we it's great <laughs> well listen thank you very much again and welcome, um, it's been Fair. a pleasure and thank I'll you look out for you thank you i find it fascinating about the way that the original trilogy worked and the fact that nobody had any idea about what was going to happen and how big this was going to become. And that leads me on to my next interview, Eileen Roberts. And I met her at ColfCon Junior. And Eileen too was also in the original trilogy. And here she is discussing her role in Star Wars A New Hope. Can you tell everybody listening... Um, who you played and what Star Wars hmm. film you were in. Yeah, basically, I got a call um, for measurement of a head, my head, and I passed that through. Then I went for a form of a casting at Elstree Studios at the time, 1976. Sure, the head was made in, measurements were made into a head cast and transpired. I was known then as a walrus, but the character became, and in the books, it's been known as a Moset Benid. And uh, for six weeks, I worked on that film, and it was absolutely claustrophobic. 
with his head cast on. There was absolutely no knowledge that this was a film going to be as iconic as it turned out to be. Yeah. But there was still, when I'm asked at different questions and answers here or abroad, there was certainly a feeling that it was special. There was a feeling that it was different and it was special. So we carried on and we did the job. And um, then it was released in 1977. And slowly you began to think, wow, this is a big thing. And many years later, 40 years plus, here I am signing to the fan base now. Yeah. Which is quite remarkable. And the thing is, is they, mm. they point you out, don't you? They, they, yeah. they, they yeah. know who you are, they know... Completely, what... I was in these mostly uh, uh, um, uh, street scenes with Alec Guinness, Mark Hamill, uh, the cantina scene. And as I said, it was a little bit strange, more than like knowing how special it was going to be. Um, and completely, and the fan base now come up, they run the film, they stop the film, they see every shot, and it, it's quite incredible. I'm still in, in awe how, you know, uh, um, special it's all become. It, it's, it's amazing that at that point, those that you know in in the 70s they didn't have the technology or the oh, no. or sure. the things that they have now because i know in the la- latest films sometimes the heads you know they have yeah. like built in no, fans no, no, and all no, that no no none no none of that no. existed when no i had to we had to we started on the on the studio there and we started as continental hours so first time ever been known in England for our catering, which means they ran from eight in the morning to uh, 10, 11 at night running buffet because we couldn't stop for food or meals. We had to drink and eat through a straw. So I was, I, I, I couldn't eat anything solid. I was just kind of on a form of a compound drink. Yeah. Because my head, I can't compare with others. I've forgotten 40 years on what other heads were made of. But with mine, I just had a very, very small area to eat or drink. So I was on a, a liquid food. Oh, my word. Well, that's and, a weight um, loss plan. If ever yeah, you ever it. you needed it. But I was minute then anyway, so didn't matter much. And um, I had split, split the, 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 the head cast a little just to breathe. Yeah. And then at the end of the film, this is very hard to believe, but there I saw the, the head down, not by a bin, but just discarded really on the floor. Oh. And that now is with a private collector, the Moset Benid with the white whiskers, is with a private collector in Paris, under lock and key, worth a six figure sum. Bigger sum. And have you seen it since then? No, I've been offered to be taken there yeah. when I'm ready to do that. Yeah. Um, so I will take them up on that. Oh, wow. But that must, just that'll wonderful. be a reunion of sorts. Oh, it <laughs> would, it would, absolutely. Would you be happy to see it? I or? would. I'd be, I'd be more interested to see if that little split was there yeah. where I got some more air through <laughs> rather than... Um, and in some of the collection, the fan base collection of pictures that I have out in the conventions, um, I'm actually behind the scenes with four of my other colleagues without anything on the, the, the mask or the the, um, the outfit because we had to breathe. So we carry a, a rare picture behind the scenes yeah. without the head on. And I'm just in civvies and sunglasses. <laughs> and somehow that got out and that, that, that sold now as a fan base picture. We are an incredible bunch of species, aren't we? We, we we'll, are. We'll why just not? get everything. Yeah, that we why want. not? I and understand it, that. Like my grandchildren, I came home from a big convention four years ago and I walked into my grandson's uh, birthday party. He was four. Yeah, and um, the whole party. I just come from a convention, full of every character walking the room, and my grandson's party was Star Wars themed. 
and I'm walking into cups, serviettes, bunting, tablecloths. You can't escape it. Are can't you escape really? it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's a great you know. Fun. And what about today? It's been a lovely morning uh, It's this been morning. lovely. It's a charity we all love, the wildlife, and yeah. it's been just brilliant. Yeah. We loved every minute of it. And nice just... people. Also, when we do come here, because of the fan base, we realise that you become a bit of a family. Yeah. So you get the same friends, become Familiar friends. Familiar faces. Coming round, oh, I saw you at so-and-so, and I remember seeing you here, and weren't you here two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's we like that as well. It's wonderful. Yeah, and Eileen, thank yeah. you very much for taking You're the time out today. Welcome. And My greatest to pleasure. And, uh, Take nice care. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. For everything in one location: daily news, reviews, interviews, podcasts, video, and social media feeds. Bookmark fanthatracks.com for Star Wars news 24/7, 365. I'm not sure I could imagine being stuck with quite a claustrophobic mask on for such a long time for a role that you didn't know whether it was going to be big or successful or whatever. But I absolutely loved chatting to Eileen. She was great fun and great crack. Now, it's time for me to indulge myself again. Here is my final interview. Now, we have heard this one before, but she is a great friend of mine and of Fanta Tracks, Julie Dolan. For those who don't know Julie... Julie has voiced Princess Leia many a time and I had the pleasure and delight of meeting her at Star Wars Fan Fun Day before the pandemic and we've become great friends ever since. She also has a travel blog going so if you follow her on Facebook have a look at that. So here I am with Julie Dolan aka Princess Leia for quite a few things in the Star Wars fandom. So here I am, this time in a football stadium, soccer to people from America, and I'm here. football to people in America. Oh, good, that's what I like to hear. (laughs) And I'm here with Julie Dolan, the voice of Leia, Mm -hmm. and the voice of Leia for quite a lot of things, Mm -hmm. actually. Yes. Would you like to tell us? Uh, The first job that I got as Leia was for Star Tours at Disneyland. Yeah. And in Orlando, in Anaheim in Orlando. And they auditioned, I think, about 200 girls. And they couldn't find what they wanted. And then they auditioned Carrie. They brought Carrie in for it. And she didn't quite sound like she did in A New Hope. And that's what they wanted. They wanted somebody that had that quality when she was in her teens. Yeah. Even though she still had a lower voice. She had had a very strong, powerful voice. Uh, voice at at 18, 19, yeah. and they wanted to find that. So they they looked uh, another 200 girls. They auditioned, and they ended up with me and I think two other girls. And they brought us into Disney Imagineering. They hired a vocal coach so we could have that slight English accent that yes. she does in the movie. Yes, and. They gave us the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech, the General Kenobi. Years ago, you served my father in the club. They, they gave us that, but they changed the words. And it was, um, I've placed information into the Star Speeder, and I was like, what is this? What is this? We had no idea. They wouldn't tell us what it was for. So I got to the Disney Imagineering. We did the recording, and they had a hologram of Leia for me to watch while oh, I was wow. recording, just so oh, I could relate wow. to her. And it was the hologram from the movie. And I stepped out of the the booth after recording, and they showed me what they did. And they changed the mouth on Carrie and manipulated it to form the words that I was saying. And I watched it, and I said, is that Carrie or is that me? And they went, no, that's that's what you just recorded. That's you. And you sound exactly like her. And I was like, oh, my God. What is this for? And they, yeah, we can't tell you. Oh, no. Ah! I still didn't know. So two weeks go by, I don't hear anything. And my agent calls me and says, okay, you booked it. What did I book? <laughs> She's like, I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out when they tell us. So they finally told us it was for Star Tours. And how long then did that run? That's running for, that'll outlive me. Wow. That's in Anaheim in uh, Orlando, and they also have it in Paris and Tokyo, but I found out, somebody um, here asked me, do you speak fluent French? 
I said, well, no, why? Well, then that's not your voice in Paris, because she's speaking in uh, French. Oh, okay. I, haven't, uh, I didn't even think about that. So, yeah, that's not me. That's another Leia. So, do you, did you then, when you... When you did the bit, when you ha- when they changed the words, so had you rehearsed beforehand the original General Kenobi? That's, that was my or, audition, yes. That was the audition, is the General Kenobi speech. Oh. Exactly as it is in the movie. They gave me her speech in the movie and said, try to sound like this. Wow. So I practiced at home. I, 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 I would say the words along with her, yeah. which helps because then I get the rhythm, I get the pitch, I get the emotion, I get everything. Yeah. And then I recorded it and sent it in. So it, it makes it easier when you hear her voice, you say it, and then you can do it. Yeah. So that's what they had at the studio. They would have her voice, and I would listen, and I would say the words. They'd stop it, and then they go, okay, go. Because it, if it's fresh in my mind, it's easy. Then you know what to do. But to pull it out of nowhere, it's without yeah. hearing it, it's not as easy. Yeah. Oh, I know what's happening. Uh, we're being interrupted for the run of the willow hood. <laughs> Ice cream sellers are there. Ice cream! 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 We've just been um, bombarded by orange suits. Yes. And ice cream, ice cream cone makers. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Hold on. Oh, it's coming. So, um, so after that job, uh, I, you know, I thought that was it, and I get called from Dave Filoni. Yes. Yes. And he, they wanted me to come in to do some in-house project. No idea what it was, and they hooked me up with. Um, the motion capture yeah. and they had a little camera on me and they said uh, we want you to do this scene with R2-D2 and C-3PO okay and I had no idea what it was for still don't know what it was for <laughs> and about a you week you go to all these things and it's like a mystery <laughs> that, yeah I think it might have been my audition for Rebels right I'm guessing but it was for some project they used it I never saw it but that was also my audition because Dave directed me and yeah. I think they wanted to see if I could really act, you know, if I was just a, a sound alike. Yeah, yeah. And I've been an actor since I was nine, so I did so TV, you knew film. Exactly what to do. I knew exactly what was to do. Was that your first time then that you'd done sort of cartoons? Animation. In, yeah. Animation. Yes. I've done commercials. Yeah. Voiceover and on camera, but I'd never done, uh, I had never done much animation. Yeah. Not like this. Um, so he, he said to me, uh, when you come in to do Rebels, we'll, you know, and started the conversation. And I went, when I come in? When? <laughs> when? So I called my agent. I said, I think I just booked Rebels. I, I didn't even know I was auditioning for it. But yeah. I heard that I might be. So they brought me in for that. And that was for the episode of Princess on Lothar? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I got called to do a new series called uh, Star Wars Legos, the uh, Freemaker, Freemaker Adventures. Yeah booked that. I didn't even audition. It was like they just grabbed me to use me for different projects. Yeah. And then they said, can you sound like current Leia, which is the gravelly, low, uh, the general, yeah, general yeah. Leia. Actually, at that time, it, uh, Force Awakens hadn't come out yet. So, yeah. um, but, but they asked me to sound like her. And I thought, I wonder what that's for. Force Awakens, she sounds like that. Yeah. So I did a few uh, video games. And I really tried to get that gravelly voice, and it was like, yeah, I'm trying. I'm just trying to sound like an old lady, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. But it worked for the video games, um, and so I did a couple of those. Who knew? And uh, and then they uh, they did Last Jedi came out, yeah. and then she passed away. So they brought me in to do some of her um, like ADR and dialogue. Oh wow. But I just did, and I was in the studio with Ryan Johnson, who was fabulous, and uh, we recorded two days 
but they ended up being able to use most of her footage, yeah, her, her dialogue, and my voice just didn't match. I mean, over the years, Carrie's voice kind of developed, didn't it? You yes. know, it, it, like we all do, we all get older and yes. you know, we yes. change. But um, So I think they, they, there was one girl that maybe said one line for her ADR that maybe yeah. they changed the line or something and they needed to redo that and she sounded just like her. I, I watched the movie and I was like, that's Carrie, that, that line is Carrie. Oh, that's the line I said, oh, that's Carrie. Oh, that's a di- I can tell that's a different voice. That's that's one of the lines that yeah. I said because I knew all the lines that they were trying to cover. Because um, I read I read the script of what needed to be reworded. Oh, wow. So yeah. I was like, oh, they're changing that line. They're changing that line. That line wasn't clear. It has to it has to be clear. So, but I heard one line that didn't wasn't me and it wasn't Karen I don't I don't think no you know but they were thank God they were able to salvage most of her stuff yes Uh, and I think and then they've said the same haven't they for episode nine that they've managed to pull stuff from um, The Force Awakens I think it is yes for 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 her in, in this one so how much pressure did you feel playing one of the the original trilogy characters um a lot, and although I didn't realize the responsibility that I had, because yeah. I, of course, I saw the movie in 1977, but I wasn't a huge sci-fi fan. So I saw the the three movies, yeah, um, four, five, and six, and that was it. So I thought, well, I better revisit those movies, and I better see one, two, and three as well, because there were only six movies yeah. at the time, yeah. and I watched them over and over and over, and then I. Uh, I did Wikipedia and I looked up Princess Leia and it has a whole yeah. uh, list of all the things that about her as if she's a real person. Well, yeah. she is, but you know what I mean. No, no, I am. I am. Um, and uh, as an actor, when you're playing a character, you want to know who who they are and what they believe in and who their parents are and and what their goals are and what what uh, how they feel about things and yeah. you know what their relationships so i dove into her character i learned terminology that i'd never heard before the star wars terminology yeah. because i knew i would be doing interviews and i thought and, I better... and you would be meeting i suppose people like myself who are very leia centric about you know our fandom and you know quoting this and asking you different different bits and pieces and and I needed to know what I was talking about you're almost like on another interview aren't you when you're being interviewed or being questioned (laughs) by fans yes yes but Um, uh, the first couple of interviews I had uh, Lucasfilm Publicity, um, the gal that works there, was on the phone with me just to make sure yeah. I didn't either say something that I shouldn't be saying or spill the beans about a storyline, um, or if, if I didn't know what I was talking about, or if I, I was, they asked me a question and I had no idea. Yeah. She was right there for me uh, if I had and that's to help good, me out. Isn't it? And, and nice to have that support yes. as well. And then after about five interviews, she said, "You know exactly what you're doing." Um, Am I? I? I'm out. I don't know. I gotta go to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you? I mean, there's lots of other people that do the voice of yes. for Leia. So, did I hear at some point you you all get together? Yeah, there's um, there's five of us Leias that have become very very close. Yeah, and it started with a gal named Misty Lee. She's a voiceover actress. She's fabulous, and she does the voice of Leia in the video game Battlefront. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And she contacted all of us. Oh, here come the ice cream people. Oh, here come the ice cream people again. (laughs) Here they come again, causing havoc. Hi, this is Julie Dolan, the voice of Princess Leia. And you're listening to Fanthatrax. It's your only hope. So apparently you and the Leias all meet up for a cup of tea and a gossip. Is that true? Misty Lee arranged it where none of us knew each other. And uh, I think actually two of them may have worked together in Clone Wars, so they knew each other. But the five of us, she contacted all of us and said, I think we should all support each other and go to lunch and just kind of hear our different views on the Leia's that we play. So the first time we met, we had lunch, and of course it was, we all knew a lot of the same people, but we all had different experiences and we had all worked with a lot of the same people. And then I, after the lunch, I was doing a play. They all came to see my play. Oh, wow. And then I had a gig. They all came to see my gig. And then another, uh, Misty is a magician. She worked at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. Yeah. We all went to see her show. 
and we and then uh, another one, Anna Graves, who plays. Actually, she played uh, Leia in I think a video game, but she played um, Satine in the Clone Wars. Oh yes, yes. And uh, Kat Tabor played P- plays Padme. Padme, that's and right. Yeah. And she also did Leia in one or two things. She did. She did it in. Uh, a, a Something that hasn't been released yet. Yeah. She, and uh, she also does it at Celebration. Yeah. She gets on stage and she does that. And then Shelby Young, who is in um, the uh, uh, Forces of Destiny. She plays Leia in Forces of Destiny, which is a... There's short little clips yeah. uh, on the Disney Channel and on... Yeah, um, yeah, they're lovely, those yes. little ones. So, so the, you've got, like, the support group now. The, yes. <laughs> in fact, I was talking to them earlier. We were all texting each other. They, they were, like, excited that I'm here. And yeah. They all want to know what it's like because uh, most of them haven't been to... Like, one of them... Shelby has never done a convention before. Has she not? Um, no, neither has Misty, I don't think. Um, and especially over here. Yeah. So they were all excited about that. So they're trying to get, like, the insider information from you. Yes. Right. Is, yes. is it is it good to over here in England? You need to say yes. Come over. I did. I did. As you can hear, that was a great interview with Julie, and we had such fun doing it. Before we were rudely interrupted by, as Julie called them, the ice cream men, and off she went with them. I hope you enjoyed listening to the interview and the other two interviews. It's always great sometimes to look back and listen to some of the things that you've done in the past and reflect on them. It's so wonderful that actually there were so many actresses in the original trilogy and beyond. So thanks for listening. If you want to be part of the action, stay updated on all the latest Star Wars news, visit fanthatracks.com or check out the free Fanthatrax app through the App Store to follow us on your mobile device. You can reach out to us and send in your questions by emailing radio at fanthatracks.com and we would love to hear some if you have any. Why don't you comment, like and share on any of our social media feeds at Fanthatrax and be sure to subscribe, leave a review, of course preferably a five star one at that, on Amazon Music, Audible, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify or your podcast or smart speaker of choice. And as always, thanks to James Semple for composing the Fanthatrax in and our Planet Leia opening music and to Mark Daniel and Vanessa Marshall for our voiceovers. Remember to tune in to Good Morning Tatooine live Sunday evenings at 9pm UK time, 4pm Eastern, 1pm Pacific on Facebook and YouTube. Check out Fanthatrax Radio on Fridays at 7pm UK time for episodes of Fanta Down Under, Planet Leia, Desert Planet Discs, Start Your Engines, Collecting Tracks and cannon fodder. And don't forget, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. UK time, our weekly episode of Making Tracks. Thanks very much for listening. May the force be with you. Coming up next on Fanta Tracks Radio, it's Making Tracks.